What's up guys, Chris here from Signs of Life. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about layering pads. Now, it's cool that these synthesizers have multiple oscillators, but the true power comes when you start layering these sounds together, thereby creating a wider sound, more textures, and more points of interest for your listeners to focus on while they're listening to your ambient music. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a couple simple tricks that I use to make your sounds more interesting, a better listening experience, and ultimately, more atmosphere for your track to either live on top of or flow within. So as always, make sure you guys smash that like button on the way in, subscribe to the channel if you guys feel called to do so, and let's dive in. All right, so here we are in Ableton Live 11. Ah yes, back to the DAW, the imagination station, as we used to call it. All right, anyway, so I have four different tracks here uh, prepared with four different patches from various sound sets. Uh, either from future or past sound sets, depending on when you're listening to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you a couple ways that I like to layer my pads in and out from one another. Okay. So um, all of these tracks are from different synthesizers or maybe some of them. Yeah. There's two vitals, one Omnisphere and a serum here. And then I have a bass patch here on the bottom. Okay. So what I like to do, I'm starting out with a 64 bar loop. And that's going to be our base texture. Now, I'm just going to play this pad. This is called Fields of Light. It's from Eternia for Omnisphere. It's really nice. Cool. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this as our base texture, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see where um, the notes that I'm playing are falling. Here, this is set in scale mode, right? So I'm looking, and this is... Sort of falling in the uh, two to three octave range right there. Okay. So any note that I potentially draw in here is going to be in key. Okay. And it's also worth noting that I'm using the utility template for Ableton Live, which you can also find on material sound sets. And I have all three send effects set to Valhalla plugins. This is the Valhalla delay, uh, the Valhalla uh, re uh, room reverb, and then the vintage reverb. Okay. So anyway, here we go. I'm just going to click on this MIDI clip and I'm going to turn off the fixed grid. Now what this is going to allow me to do is sort of liberally paint some of these notes in and then um, we are going to set up our scale appropriately. I'm going to pick a different scale here and I'm going to start playing. So here we go. All right. That just changed the mood, huh? All right. There we go. And then I'm just going to start painting these notes in. Maybe they start at different times and then start kind of making some different stuff happen. This is going to be um, sort of like a drone, okay? And I'm just going to make sure that I cover enough ground where there's enough variation in our bass texture because I'm going to use the volume to sort of like move in and out from these things and just, you know, maybe some long notes, some short notes. It's got a long tail, doesn't it? All right, and keep on going. And like I said, all of these notes are in key because I'm in scale mode. So I'm more or less painting in my DAW with sound, which is kind of cool. And there we go. All right, we've done that. Now let's hit play on the DAW there. All right, and I'm gonna adjust my gain staging to make sure that we're kosher and then I'm gonna add a reverb to sort of glue this whole thing together there we go like this now what I also have you notice I have an EQ plug-in here on the end I also have a spectral analyzer okay so what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna look to see where this pad is falling on my spectrum now, this is the span uh, spectral analyzer from uh, Vox Mango and it's free doesn't cost anything and you can just look to see where on the frequency spectrum this is now hitting this pad is very strong in the 1 to 2k range right here it's also very strong in the 10k range over here okay so I can work with that and I can say okay my base texture is very strong and so something else can fit in between here between 3 and 9k or 3 to 8k right here so to say all right and I can also use this EQ I put a separate EQ here um, I can sort of like take out the bass frequencies. We can make this a high pass filter. 
and we can go ahead and just maybe roll off the bass because we can add that back in later. All right, now you can see our shape is changing up here on the spectrum analyzer. Cool, so that's a good start. Again, we've added some reverb. We can add a little bit of delay to fill in the gaps and now we're gonna move on to our second one. So now let's open up the next patch or then on the next track and this is called Space Crickets. Now this is from my upcoming Anomaly sound set. Now I'm gonna use Space Crickets like this. Ah, yes. There, you can hear some of those space crickets. You hear that? <laughs> yes, the old space crickets, right? So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna use this one as sort of like covering maybe some of the high end because when I look at space crickets on the span, I'm gonna do it again. It's way up here at the eight, 10, even above 10K range, and that's where this one is falling, okay? So I'm gonna say, okay, this is gonna be my high pad, all right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of make some shorter, I'm gonna come up here to maybe a different octave range and make some, oops, I forgot to set my fixed grit off. I'm gonna make some different chords, different chord shapes, a little shorter than last time, okay? Maybe some notes over here and then start drawing these in. And again, I just went off of um, intuition and feel about where I, where I thought that this pad should fall. Okay, some longer notes, some shorter ones. Maybe that's too many of those. I'm gonna take this out. You always wanna give enough of the root frequency um, there. We're playing in the key of G sharp minor, by the way. All right. That's a nice note, I like that F sharp. And then here we go. Okay, cool. So now we have sort of our high pad. Now I'm gonna solo this high pad. And again, we're gonna go back to the span and we're gonna look and see what's going on. All right, now let's add some reverb. Cool. Very good. All right, I've already set up the EQ curve here. I can bring some of that back, but I think I'm gonna leave it right there on the edge. Yeah, nice. Some final volume automation and that'll be good to go. All right, cool. So now let's move on to the next one. And the next one is called Sector 9. It's from the same sound set, Upcoming Anomaly, which should be out in about a couple weeks. All right, so this is Sector 9. And as you can hear, this is very mid-rangey. I call it mid-rangey, but for a pad, that's right in the middle. I like that. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna again make a 32 bar MIDI clip. And with this one, I'm gonna start drawing in some chord shapes, okay? And those chord shapes are gonna be spaced out. And with that, I'm going to uh, continue layering my sound. So here we go. This is the first chord. Sounds good. Let's make another chord shape here. I'm gonna turn this down, by the way. It's a little too loud. Actually, it's a lot too loud. There we go. And then we're gonna space our next chord out to maybe to hit around right here. You can see Ableton's telling me what notes I'm playing uh, on the push as I, as I go about this. I love the push, it's so great. That's a little too high, but I'm gonna add, the, again, a root note in there. We'll try this chord. We already did that one. Let's do this one. I'll go back and erase that. I, I just want some variation, and this will tie our, you know, our, the feeling of these pads together, I think. When you have these little chords that are spaced out, it really brings it home, and it, and it provides a whole other textural element. Okay, so here we go, and this one, and this one, and maybe we'll do, uh, where's that F sharp? There's that F sharp. All right, we'll do that. Cool. Good. All right, and then we'll make sure that these are sort of like equally spaced, no pun intended. And then uh, here we go. Now I'll add some more reverb. And now let's solo this one up and we'll look on the span to see where this is falling. All right. Nice. Okay, I'll, I'll move this one back a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Add some delay so it fills in those gaps. 
cool. Now if I go back and I unsolo everything, listen to what we got. Oh wow. That's massive. All right. Now with the Sector 9, again, we're gonna look and see where this is falling. We still got some pretty significant base. What we, what we can do is we can sort of say, okay, I mean, this pad, I created it, but you can still do some subtractive EQ here and say, all right, well, maybe I'm going to give my other pads a little bit of room, okay? And maybe do some subtractive EQ. By subtractive EQ, I mean finding some frequencies that you don't want by adding them and then... Maybe we don't want this one, right? So we're going to take that down. All right, we'll take number four and we'll change the EQ style. And we'll move it around. So we get something that's bothering us. Ooh, like right there. Yeah, we can do without that. There you go, and take it out. Cool. And now we'll take a high pass and we'll wrap it right up against that. Perfect. All right, cool. Now with the last one, this is this is serum. Okay, the last one is serum. And the reason why I saved it for last, because serum is like my Swiss Army blade. It's like my Leatherman. It is like, it just cuts through anything, right? And that's what I love about the sound of serum. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use this last one. It's sort of like a lead almost, okay? So with Skybridge, I'm gonna come out here, and this is from Ancient Technology, the first sound set I did for Serum. I'm gonna start playing this. Ooh, yeah, you can hear that. That's really nice, right? So let's go back to the actual um, hat itself. There we go, cool. And now we're gonna look on the span to see where this is falling. Oh, that's really heavy in that four to 6K range. Okay, so this is, if anything that you get from this video is to be aware of where your frequencies are, so you can begin to tame those frequencies and create more balanced and more well-rounded mixes in the end, all right? So here we go. I'm going to start doing some lead stuff. So we're gonna come up here and I'm just gonna draw in some notes here. Mm-hmm. Nice. How about this one? I like the second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is good. Maybe a lower note. One, just one F sharp, because I love that note. And then and then bring it home. There we go, right there. Cool. All right, so that's sort that's of our end lead sound. Now I'm all together. All right. There we go. Now, you guys also might have noticed that I had, I actually, I said this at the beginning, I have a bass patch here on the bottom. Now, the reason why I took out all of the, most of the bass frequencies and a lot of these pads is so I can add it back in later in mono using a bass sound, an actual bass sound, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do here right now. Now with the bass sound, you can add multiple notes, you can do whatever you want with the bass. I'm just gonna do like, um, this is something that my friend uh, Lauga is very good at. He's such a great artist. I admire him so much and I love his music. And he does this so well, uh, where you take one note of the bass and you let the whole drone just carry it. And that bass note is gonna be this. So I'm gonna uh, open up this patch. This is from Anomaly as well. This is Vital, okay? And uh, let's go down even in there, like to that range, okay? We're gonna go really deep on this. And now look at, listen to what this sounds. I ha again, I have the bass mono clicked in on this um, utility. So everything below 200 hertz is mono. Now listen to what this sounds like with all the rest of the pads. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now you can, again, you can change the notes. Now 
That sounds good. Oof. I like that. Maybe we'll speed up the attack and just do something like that, all right? So let's speed up the attack on this envelope right here. I love that. You guys know I like that bass one right there, right? So it's fine. It's happy accidents here in the DAW. I really didn't plan on doing a moving bass, but whatever. I'm gonna do a long moving bass, all right? So I'm gonna change the color of this clip, maybe make it, I don't know, green or something. All right, cool. And then I'm gonna maybe make this one bar. And then... How's that? Okay, cool. And we'll do that as an eight bar loop. And maybe that'll work. How's that? Yeah, that's what I want. So you can hear the bass is now living underneath all those pads. All right, cool. Now what we can do is we can uh, change up when these start. Now, I, I never do volume automation before I've actually bounced the tracks down to audio, but for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna fade this bass in. So we'll go here and we'll go to the volume automation. And uh, there we go, like this. I'll just fade this in over four bars and lock it in. There we go. It's gonna slowly come in. And I'll put a loop here, so we're locked in. There we go. Cool. We can also do some subtle, uh, for demonstration purposes, we can do some subtle volume automation here. Maybe take this curve and bring it down. Make this one bring it up. Now this, imagine you're doing this in the mix. So then you're going like this and like that. And I'm just, I'm just gently pulling some of these and maybe we'll take our base texture and we're going like this and we'll go like that so they kind of all sort of come in at different times and then this one like this and then it gives it a little more variation just more points of interest for your mind to latch on to there we go oh yeah so the pads are fading in and out they all have the same reverb and delay so they're getting fed into the same sends and everything has enough room to breathe. Final thoughts here. You can absolutely add effects to all of these. You can like add some chorus. You can do all kinds of things. You can add their own, their own dedicated reverbs. You can blend them all. You can pan them in different locations. We didn't even talk about that, but this is layering pads. Give the bass some room to do its thing and then layer everything else on top of it and you're going to be well on your way to making spacious beautiful and ultimately your productions are going to be that much better <laughs> it's all about making good ending music. that's what i wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching if you guys like this video make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you have any other tricks or tips about layering your pads in ambient Make sure to let me know and let everyone else know. We're building, we're sharing, we're growing together on this channel. And it's my honor to be doing this for you. <laughs> my name is Chris from Signs of Life. As always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. I'll see you all on the other side. Peace.